All right, so I made a video the other day and I decided against uploading it because, well, to be honest, it was crap. It didn't really have too much good info. It wasn't even close to entertaining or informative other than just me ranting, but uh, on top of that, I was more focused on what I was looking at and not where I was aiming the camera. So it was a whole lot of, you know, this kind of crap. So anyways, so as you see, I got the condenser mounted. I got a bunch of AC stuff. Uh, I don't remember if I showed this before, but I got some, a uh, whole bunch of these little cheapo AC fittings along with, uh, not these, those are the ones I had to buy. Came with like four and five foot of number 10 and number eight and these dryers I won't use. And there's some of the hose that I won't use. But anyways, uh, the only hose I could use was this number six, which is looped up under the fender Tying in right there up top. Barring my, this crimp tool from uh, buddy Mr. Jimmy, which is so far working great. I only have crimped this one line here, but it worked wonderful. Chill, dog, chill. So, anyways, so this new condenser, I fabbed this bracket up, bolted up in the normal hinge spot. I think I could actually still use the hinge here now because I actually had to lower the intercooler. Made these new intercooler brackets, took the ones that I had up here before and put them down here, flipped them the opposite direction so it kicks it out further. I have a little bit of clearance back behind the, the uh, condenser. The intercooler has enough space to where I think I can put a fan right here on the front and I might do that if I can find a real slim fan. And I might tie in these two fans into the same trigger wire and then have this front one as my secondary fan that the holly triggers when the ac kicks on um it'll also have a temp as well for it to kick on but it'll be a higher temp it'll be kind of like a, a third safety fan to help blow some fresh air on it who as you see i cut some holes in the front apron uh i marked some more i need to cut them wider i marked this one I'm probably gonna just like run the length down and then loop it and then run the length up. Uh, this tape is just kind of marking roughly where the intercooler core comes to. I'm gonna have to chop the tanks off of the cores and I'm going to pick up a piece of sheet aluminum tomorrow and I'm gonna have to weld up some new end tanks. So instead of them coming out, you know, the end straight out, they're gonna be what's called a backdoor inlet outlet where the tanks come wide and then they just have a piece come straight back. And I'm gonna feed it out through here and out through roughly here because I've got this 90 here. But as you can see, it hits. I'm pretty sure it'll clear just fine once I trim this away. I had to fabricate this little bracket down here at the bottom to hold the condenser. Condenser mount is beautiful. The lines fit great. The line for up here fits. I'm waiting to crimp that because it goes up to here on when I do this intake. I wanna make sure this is where it's gonna be before I cut that line in case I need a little extra slack to go around it or something. So on to the two predicaments that are time consuming. One is gonna be fabricating new intakes for that intercooler. That's gonna be time consuming. It's gonna take a minute. Um, I haven't welded a whole lot of aluminum other than some practice beads. It's just gonna be interesting. See if I screw it up. That intercooler is about 200 bucks. A new core is about 200 bucks. So if I screw it up, then I'll probably end up paying someone to do the next one. But uh, I had to take my overflow off. Don't know if it'll be able to go back on. Don't know where I'll be able to put it, where I'll have room to. I might be able to fit it on the side here. I, I don't know, it's gonna be tight probably with that intercooler piping coming down through here. I might be able to get a smaller one, about half that size maybe, I don't know. Um, the other thing I have to do is obviously I have to finish the the lines I had to buy a like 10 foot of number 10 line because it has to go from here all the way around hopefully through this hole probably won't fit through there I'll probably have to feed it up here somewhere loop around underneath and then follow this route of this number six line uh, the other predicament have this there was a matching one on this side so I can't kick this intake straight 90 because it hits the hood it doesn't clear this i'm gonna end up taking the hood back off and trimming away this little 
excess here. I'm not gonna do like I did last time, even though I had stuff covered and the motor sealed, somehow it, these little crescents, shavings from the nibbler, Let's see if I can get the render. Yeah, these little pieces that the nibbler throws off, these little crescent moon shaped slivers. Whenever I had that issue with the cam bolt coming loose, I actually found one of those in the motor, or a couple of them. Somehow they didn't find a way into the cylinders or whatever, didn't do any damage. I don't remember where I saw them, in the lifter valley maybe, or on one of the lifters, I don't even remember. Shit, it might've been on, I think it's actually on one of the intake valves, or in one of the intake runners from the intake manifold. I think that's where it was. It ended up getting in, but it didn't go all the way in, luckily. I don't know, hear that, or the few, maybe some blue on out the exhaust, who knows. But somehow I didn't screw my motor over more than I did. Um, so anyways, I'm taking this hood off to trim that. And I'm gonna take it into the yard and I'm gonna shut the door. And I'm probably gonna cover the motor too, just for, who knows? I don't know, I got bad luck. So I'm probably gonna just blanket it, take the hood off, pull the door shut, cut that off, trim it, shave it, whatever, sand it, smooth it, respray it. While I have it off, I'm probably gonna leave it off until I body work all these terrible scratches some more. I'm gonna fix that while I have the hood off as well because I don't wanna do that in here on the car because it's gonna throw Bondo dust everywhere. So I'll do that as well. But before I go taking the hood off and do any of that, I need to get it where it this somewhat fits. Which leads me to, I have to do something with these valve covers. The cheap, easy method, I could flip them. Swap this one to that side and put the filters in the back and that'll put this oil fill up front there by the turbo. And then I have two baffled filters still. That's probably what I'm gonna try doing and hope that it doesn't blow oil. I know you're supposed to put them up front, I believe, to that way if you're accelerating hard, any oil that's in the lit, in the rocker area and up in the valve cover area that goes to the back doesn't get blown up into it, even though they're real baff, real well baffled. I don't know if that's an issue or not. I don't remember if I ever ran them with the filters in the back. So I'm probably going to try that first because the other alternative would be to have new valve covers made, which I plan to do later anyways, that have AN fittings on them and do an oil catch can, which I have no clue where the hell I'd mount that other than, now nah, the filter sits here, so I can't even mount it up here. It's normally mounted on the firewall or on the back fender apron, like somewhere in this area, but I got fuel reg, I got coil. Uh, I'm running out of engine base space. So that's, that's another thing that is a possibility. But even then, I have to make sure I have this done to see where I can place that AN fitting because I don't think I'd be able to place it all the way up here. I'm never gonna be able to get a, an actual hose on it because it'll stick up too high. So I'd have to bump it back a little bit at least. Um, or maybe even place them in the front. I don't know. And the other kicker with that is I don't know if I'd be able to still use my fancy uh, billet spark plug wire holders because I think fabricated valve covers use long bolts and they pass through all the way from the top, I think, similar to how this one does here. So, I have to go look at them, price them. I wanna say they're like 250 bucks at least, if not 400 bucks for, you know, hand fabricated aluminum valve covers. Cause that'll get rid of this crazy huge oil fill and give me an actual normal fill cap. It'll give me AN fittings where I can do regular Feeds and they'll be baffled on the inside. I don't have to use these weird like threaded on ones, even though these work great. Of course, the other option would be to weld these. I could try to just seal this one side and run just one. I risk blowing that cap off under boost if it builds up too much crankcase pressure because this top cap isn't threaded on, it's just O-ring, so you know, it just pops off. I'm surprised I've never blown it off and lost it be unfortunate because it's a billet cap and this little oil fill is not too cheap. Um, yeah, that's where it's at. But the AC compressor is mounted. Oh, so the other video that I didn't show or I didn't upload, it was ranting about this. I got one, the CVF, I don't remember, if you recall, I had a Saginaw, Saginaw style power steering pump that I couldn't use. So the original belt I bought, it was supposed to loop the power steering and the AC to the crank. So since I'm not using the power steering pump, I had to get a shorter belt. 
The belt CBF told me to get is like an inch short, so I had to order a belt. This belt showed today, which is a 480 HD. It's a Gates fleet line green belt. It is like a half inch too short. I've got one other belt ordered that was a little bit longer, I think. I'm hoping that one fits because that's actually the same as this belt. It's a gator back. So they'll be matching at least. Like that matters. You know, I'm OCD, it's gotta match. So hopefully that fits. That shows tomorrow or Saturday. I don't know. So, anyways, that was one of the issues was the belt was too short that CVF told me to get. That was kind of an annoyance. Not pain in the butt. What sucked was when I mounted this belt, this uh, idler pulley, and I put this cover on, these little Allen heads hit on this fan. It would just tink, 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 tink. So, I don't know if you can see it, but I cut the shit out of this front core. So I took out a bunch of the part that curves inward, and then I took a hammer and dolly, and I hammered the ever living piss out of this and knocked it forward. So it was hitting. So this motor piece was sitting right about here. I probably gained about a half inch of clearance and that ought to be plenty good. And I also installed riv nuts. So now I don't have to hold a wrench on the backside. It's just bolts and it comes out so nice. But I gained clearance, did that. And the other thing I mentioned was I talked about how I regret life of not spending the money, even though I'd already bought this to buy the Mustangs to fear front core support that's just flat sheet metal because then my radiator would be all the way forward. Granted, I think it would still hit on this upper piece. I'd probably end up having to trim this out right here and just reinforce this piece with bar. Uh, later on, I might end up doing something with this front core and just doing sheet metal. Get a piece CNC'd out or just order the one from them probably just because it'd be easier. And re -welding this later on down the road when I pull the motor and do all that stuff because I got more plans for the future of this car. Like I said, uh, eventually the motor will come out and I'll do a 351 build, twins, and I plan on doing that ceramic coat on the firewall when I do that as well for some extra insulation. But, so that's what's on the plate now is intake, plumbing, intercooler intakes. Once that's done, I can finish the AC lines. And yeah, so, uh, the only thing I do need to do is actually need to check with uh, old Mr. Jimmy that I borrowed the tool from and see if he's okay with me keeping it that long. Because if he needs it back or if he doesn't want me keeping it that long, then I will be going ahead and crimping these lines or I'll just go reborrow it again come time that I finish this because I don't know how long it's going to take me to fabricate that. I'm hoping I'm going to have it damn near knocked out this weekend. Hoping. But. Depends on how smooth the welding goes and removing these tanks because I have to go pick up a clean flap disc because if you're not aware, just like mixing stainless and mild steel, you definitely can't mix steel with aluminum. So I can't use any grinders or sanding discs that have touched steel. It needs to be all aluminum or I'll contaminate it and it won't weld for shit. So I'll be going to pick up some flap discs tomorrow as long with the sheet metal. And I can start cutting those tanks off and getting ready to make new in tanks yeah all right that's it guys uh, i don't think i need to talk on anything else uh along with the intake pipe and fab i gotta redo my pull off valve unless i didn't try to fit it that one might actually fit in place of this but i have a feeling it's gonna stick it way too long i don't know we'll see yeah it'll, it'll save me some time if i don't have to re-weld that flange i did buy another flange for that blow off valve just in case all right guys, along with uh, all that, I still gotta wire the AC. It's not even wired up yet. But yeah, all right guys, thanks for watching. Catch me next time and hopefully this thing is a little bit you know, further along the way. Maybe I'll have AC before cruising. Later guys.